Okay, so hello guys. So, um, what I wanted to talk about in this video, um, so I was doing some examples from the, um, book, which is OpenStax, um, so it's, it's College Algebra OpenStax, um, edition 2E, I think is what it is, and, um, basically, I just want to go over the vocabulary that is in the book because I feel like when I do the examples maybe some of you don't understand the vocabulary very well um, that is being represented in the book so I kind of want to go over um, just the vocabulary that we um, that this chapter covers and of course I'm going to post a link in the description below um, to the book um, these are not my notes at all um, these are from the book, but I will go ahead and, and explain what it means in my own words. Um, but I will post a link in the description, um, you know, so that you guys can see it. Um, so, let's see, one second. So, um, it, it first starts with this, like, example, right? Um, and these are the learning objectives, you know, basically plotting points, plotting ordered pairs, um, graphing equations by plotting points, graphing um, equations with a graphing utility, find x, finding x and y intercepts, using the distance formula, using the midpoint formula, etc. So I want to go over the, um, the vocabulary that is... Um, represented in this part of the book so i'm not going to read all of this but um this is just a little like history with um with how um you know descartes um you know made the coordinate system and basically the way that this is represented is that there is a um so it says here it says um it says the cartesian coordinate system we call it we call it a cartesian coordinate system just means that uh it's it's a coordinate system you know where you have x an x axis and a y axis right and it says perpendicular axes so basically what that means is that this um so this part here this angle forms a 90 degree angle right um and the x-axis is vertical so it's a vertical line and the y-axis is a horizontal or i'm sorry the x-axis is a horizontal line and the y-axis is a vertical line right and then and then they talk about um quadrants so there are four quadrants in the um in the in the coordinate plane so the first one goes at the positive x-axis and positive y-axis so um, quadrant one and then quadrant two is on the negative x-axis and the positive y-axis so um, the way that i can explain this is so if i just kind of go over here the way that i can explain it is um when we have we have a we have like a Cartesian plane, right? So this is x, this is y, and then let this be negative x, and let this be negative y, right? Quadrant 1, which is here, is always going to be x, comma, y, okay? So the x-axis when you say the x-axis, you're going to the right x units, however many units it goes. And then, so that's quadrant one, and then quadrant two is to the, so it's, it's, you're going in, um, so you're going in, you're going counterclockwise. So basically, quadrant two is the next one. So this one is represented by negative x, comma y so 
my x is negative because it's on going to the left and it's going up y units so um, when x so when we have negative x it means it's going x units left right and when we have y units it's going it's going um, it's going y units up right so um, however many y units it is right and then quadrant 3 is the next one so quadrant 3 is going to be negative x comma negative y right so um, this would be quadrant 3 so it would be x units left y units down right so x units left y units down and you always one of the things that i forgot to mention you always start at the origin so the origin is just zero zero it's just the very middle of your coordinate plane right the very very middle um so um and then finally for quadrant four you would have um x so it's x um, negative y right so it'd be x negative y so let me do let me do it like this so negative y right so that is just what what this is um, they call it a Cartesian plane that's just how it how it what it's called um, so um, and that's what a quadrant is and what they mean by perpendicular to each other they're saying that the x and y axis are perpendicular meaning that they form a 90 degree angle right here so the x axis is perpendicular to the y axis right so that's just all that is saying right um and like i said it's it says it is known as the origin or the point zero zero so the origin yes the origin is always going to be zero zero right um so that's another thing right and um so x-axis so positive x-axis goes to the right negative x-axis goes to the left positive y-axis goes up negative y-axis goes down right um and then um there's so each point on a plane is defined by a an x and y coordinate so the x coordinate so basically it's it's um so when we put when we put it of this form right we can label we can label this as the x coordinate and then we can label this as the y coordinate okay so that's all that's saying and um and then let's see here and then they talk about an ordered pair so an ordered pair is literally x comma y so this entire thing we can call it an ordered pair okay so um, so that entire thing is an ordered pair so like 3 comma 2 is an ordered pair 3 comma 1 dot 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 right um, and then um, so for example, we can represent the point 3, negative 1 by moving 3 units to the right and 1 unit down. So, when you're again, when you're going positive x units, you're going to go to the right x units and down y units, right? So here, 3, comma, negative 1 would be like positive going to the right 3 units and down 1 unit, right? And then it says um, a two-dimensional plane. So the x-axis is, is the horizontal axis. So the x-axis, like I said, 
is always your horizontal line um, or axis, right? And the y-axis is always your vertical axis, right? So um, that is like some, um, some vocabulary. Let me see what else there is in here. Um, okay, so another thing that I want to go over is an x and y intercept. So an x and y intercept, um, so basically when you have, um, when you have a, um, like on the graph, let's say like you have a graph, right? So let me kind of do a graph really quick. So, so here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis, right? So the thing is, when they talk about x-intercepts, um, so let me, let me try to write this down. So um, let's see here. So um, when they talk about x-intercepts, let me just kind of do this really quick. An X one second guys. An X intercept right is is usually of the form um so is so basically it's any it's it's a is a it's a point a point on the x axis where y equals zero. Okay. Basically, an x intercept is on the x axis. It's literally on the x axis. And it's of the form x, comma, zero. Okay. Oops. So, in other words, it's where y equals zero, and it's on the x-axis. Um, now, it can be also on the negative x-axis. So, this can be negative x, comma, zero, right? So... So we can also have something like that, right? And so it, that just that's just what it means. It's where it crosses the x-axis. What point does it cross the x-axis, right? So that's what x-intercept is. Now y-intercept, so y-intercept, let me just kind of... So when you talk about y-intercept actually let me just I shouldn't have done that <laughs> um, when you talk about y-intercept and let me so the y-intercept is a point on the y-axis where y equals zero I'm sorry x equals zero oh my goodness I'm getting them mixed up um, so basically, let me just kind of do this really quick. Uh, okay, there we go. So basically, it's where 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 x equals zero. So it, it's going to be any point on this line. So we can have it here, and we can name that. We can name that zero, comma, y, right? We can name that zero, comma, y, right? And also, because this is the negative y-axis, we can have below that it would be zero, negative y, right? So 
these two would be y intercepts right so that's the basic idea and then these two would be x intercepts okay it's going to make more sense once we get into um, like equations and stuff and graphing. Um, also, like when you're, so it's where y equals 0. So x-intercept is where y equals 0 and y-intercept is where x equals 0. So the reason why we say x equals 0 and y equals 0 is because um, it is actually because we're going to have to understand how to, like, find, um, how to find those without looking at a graph, right? Um, so basically, they would give you, like, an equation, and they would say, you know, find the x and y intercepts of the equation, right? Um, so that is what, that is what, basically, what that is, right? Um, hold on one second. So like it says here, given an equation, find the intercepts, right? Find the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. So the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And then the x in or the y-intercept, you set x equal to 0 and solve for y. Um, so x-intercept, set y equal to 0, solve for x. y-intercept, set x equal to 0, solve for y. So I would really try to memorize that. For x and y intercepts right um so then um let's see here so then so then we come to the distance formula right so the distance formula is used to find the distance between two points on the plane so like basically it gives you something like this right um so the distance formula kind of looks like a similar um, a similar theorem called Pythagorean theorem where a squared plus b squared equals c squared and I'm sure you guys have learned that in geometry um, in high school and stuff so the distance formula is kind of it's very similar to that it's it's kind of the same thing but it's it's more in like when you have when you have um, when you have it in a coordinate plane so it's like the Pythagorean theorem, but it's when you have it in the coordinate plane. Um, so basically, the absolute value of y2 minus y1 would, would be your b in, your, in Pythagorean theorem. And then the absolute value of x2 minus x1 would be your a in, in, your, um, in Pythagorean theorem. And then between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, there's a distance called the c, c value, which in terms of Pythagorean theorem, that is what c is. So it forms this right triangle, right? Um, and then, so basically, so basically to find the distance, that's why they use absolute value. I wouldn't overthink that. Um, just know that you know, it's, the distance is always positive. Distance is always going to be positive. Um, between two points, distance will always be positive. Um, and, um, yeah, so I don't think it'll ever be negative. It's, it's never negative. It's always positive. So then, given the endpoints, so then when you do something like this, we know that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we can solve for c by taking the square root of both sides, right? So c, so we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? That's the Pythagorean theorem. We can solve for c by taking the square root of both sides. So c is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, right? So given that in terms of a, B, and C, we know that A, right, we know that A was the absolute value of, um, I think it said X2, X2 minus X1, right, so X2 minus X1, and then B was 
the absolute value of y2 minus y1. So then given that information, we can say that, um, and then we also know that c is equal to d, which is the distance formula, right? So then we can say the following. So let me color code this actually. One second. So then given the following, right, we can say that d, so d, right, d is equal to the square root, and we said the absolute value of x2 minus x1 quantity squared, right, so quantity squared, like that, and then plus the absolute value of y2 sorry guys, one second y2 minus y1 and then um, and then quantity squared, right? So, obviously we can take off the um, we can take off the 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 absolute value signs because we can in, we can we can we know that distance is positive so we don't have to have absolute value symbols um, for you know for the for the x and for the for this part right so we can say that the distance formula can be represented by x two minus x one squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? And this is what the distance formula is, right? So we're going to go over some examples once um, I finish, so in the next video, right? And then we go over the midpoint formula, right? So the midpoint formula is basically um, it's a formula where you find the midpoint between two points. So here we have x1, y1 here, and then we have x2, y2 here. So then the midpoint formula can be represented by x, x1 plus x2 over 2, comma y1 plus y2 over 2, right? So that is how you find the midpoint of a line segment, right? So, um, and then the center of a circle, um, actually, hold on, actually, no, that's not what, that's not what that would be, um, but yeah, that is some vocabulary, guys, over this section, um, I, I literally wanted to go over the vocabulary because it's very important, um, so if y'all have any questions whatsoever over this vocabulary, please let me know. Um, I am doing this now because I feel like when it comes to doing the examples, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to like, you know, like for you guys to be confused over the vocabulary. Because once I go over the examples, I'm not really going to go over the vocabulary as much. Um, I might review it, but I'm not going to be saying, like, exactly what it is. Um, so, yeah. With that being said, guys, I really hope that helps. I really hope that makes it clear over what the vocabulary is over this section. Um, please like, comment, and or subscribe. And um, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.